Hi, and welcome to my Pulse with Modulator. I've got, a, I've got a block diagram here of how this works. Effectively, what we've got is a 555 timer, and that creates the frequency, the pulse frequency, and you can see that on the oscilloscope here. So the 555 timer has a, a duty cycle which is on for most of the time, and then off just for a short fraction of the time there. This 555 timer prevents a switch on voltage or, or provides a switch on voltage for a FET cap charger. And the capacitor charger is shown on this oscilloscope here and it provides a ramp waveform there. You can see the red ramp waveform. And that is discharged on our circuit. So this, if we look at this, there's the 555 timer there. That's producing the voltage on. This is the FET cap charger and that's discharged here by a transistor using a BC109 transistor and effectively what happens is we get the this output waveform here is fed eventually to a comparator on my block diagram there. So all of this provides one um, ramp waveform as we've seen there, to this, to this comparator. And the other part, the other side of the circuit, is an LM35 temperature sensor, which I've got over here, and an LM35 amplifier, and that's used to give some scaling to the output of the, of the temperature sensor. So I can make this circuit more sensitive or less sensitive, depending upon the gain I use with this amplifier here. The pulse width modulator has a frequency, this one has a sample frequency of one millisecond, so it's taking 1,000 samples a second. Right. So to test this circuit, this one works on temperature, and I've got a heat gun here, and I'm going to place the heat gun so that it's facing the LM35. What you're going to notice is that on my oscilloscope here, the width of this pulse will change. So as, as the temperature increases, the width of the pulse will change, and when I take the gun away, the width will decrease. So we start this up here, and we can see. So as the temperature increases, the width of the pulse increases, but the key thing here to notice is that frequency remains stable. A lot of pulse width modulators made with 555 timers are not actually pulse width modulators because the frequency changes. This circuit, the frequency remains rock steady and the pulse width changes, the duty cycle changes. And that's all because of the comparator here and in this one as soon as the temperature rises above the ramp, it switches off. You can invert it by changing the inputs to the comparator. I've got um, a full circuit diagram, which is here, and I will explain how this works on a, on a computer. Much easier to do on a computer. Okay? Thank you very much. Hi, and welcome to my circuit explanation. The heart of this circuit is the 555 timer which we have here and this one's set up to give a frequency of one millisecond. Now you can set that to whatever you want but my one has, a, has that frequency one millisecond. The interesting thing about this 555 timer is that it has a duty cycle where the output is predominantly on. So we look at some duty cycles here, this top one the output is predominantly off, this one is 50-50 but on my one I have an output from the 555 timer, pin 3, which is usually, for the most part, on. And it's just off for a fraction of each millisecond. The 555 timer output feeds the gate of a MOSFET here. And it's the MOSFET that's used to constant current charge a capacitor, this capacitor here. The capacitor charges all the time the output of the 555 timer is on and then when the output of the 555 timer is off 
it goes through a NOT gate, forward biases and switches on the transistor and this transistor here, Q1, discharges the capacitor down to ground through there. And that's what produces the ramp waveform. So if we go here, this is a ramp waveform here and that's produced by constant current charging. Now the reason for producing this ramp waveform is because it's going to be used with a comparator. So the output of our transistor here is fed to one of the inputs of the comparator. And on each cycle, the ramp starts at 0 volts and then ramps all the way up to 5 volts. The other part of the circuit begins with a 7805 voltage regulator and that's used with an LM35 temperature sensor. So in my circuit, the LM35 and its temperature dictates the width of the pulse. So as the temperature goes up, as you saw in the video, the width of the pulse increases. To make it scalable, I've, I feed the LM35 into a, a simple non-inverting amplifier and roughly speaking my width of pulse goes from 0 to 100 degrees so at 0 degrees or right about 0 degrees there will be no width and at 100 degrees full width. The output of the amplifier goes to the comparator to this input the comparator here. When the temperature rises above the ramp waveform the comparator output in this configuration will switch on. If you swap about the comparator inputs the opposite will happen so you've got flexibility but effectively that is all there is to the circuit. I fully appreciate that you can build pulse with modulators or buy them <coughs> as, as ICs but it's a, this is a good circuit to build because there's a lot of different techniques that uh, will come in very useful when you come to interface with uh, more complex digital circuits and uh, you'll learn a lot through doing it. Okay, I hope that helped you and uh, have fun.